one. And we're live. I'm Morgan Sheets. I'm the founder of Live Well, Be Well, Do Good. I'm a master wellness coach and media consultant for female health, wellness, and fitness entrepreneurs and personal development spiritual women that are helping raise the consciousness and make the world a better place. And that's why I'm so grateful to have with me today, Utah Russell. And she's the founder of the holistic lifestyle website, Living with the Moon, which teaches you how to use, I'm going to call them ancient principles. I don't know if that's accurate. <laughs> um, and integrate them with a modern lifestyle so you can create holistic success and wellness. So thank you so much for joining me today, Utah. Thank you. So glad to have you. Um, my Initially, I found out about Utah's work because I personally was looking to be more connected with the natural rhythms of life. Um, and my mom is a huge fan. I had to tell that today. She references your website all the time um, on Utah's website, which will tell us more about. You can go on a calendar and see kind of what activities are best to do on each day. And it's something she tunes into all the time. So I'm so glad I get to connect with you further. <laughs> so nice to hear that somebody appreciates the work. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more how you got started with the work that you're doing. Well, I mean, I've been growing up like this. So there was never a point where I actually literally learned that. I, I, it all comes from my grandmother, really. And the first time I got to do a bio, biodynamics or was immersed by it was when I was probably about three, four, five. I can't remember the actual age, but I remember very specifically my grandmother had loads of herb jars and she was mixing teas and potions and lotions. And you know, that as a time, that wasn't really the body shop hadn't been invented. <laughs> yeah. you know, it was very kind of advanced, I would say, or, or maybe not advanced because obviously that's what people always used to do. So I was always immersed in it and the moon cycles and the nature of the land. And, and so I grew up with it. And then I became a makeup artist and moved away from, I'm Austrian originally, you can hear from my accent. I moved to London, first to Paris and then to London. And uh, I kind of forgot a little bit about it. And then I did a TV show and there was this uh, cosmetic expert on, and she said, and I was talking about that and my grandmother's stuff and she said, have you heard about it? She said, I've never heard about this. It's absolutely fascinating. You should write a book about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, well, I was, uh, you know, I'm not a natural gifted writer, I would say. And so I just thought, well, I just kind of initially wanted to do, do a book and it took me ages. And then my my husband actually said, why don't you do a website? And that's what I've been doing. But I'm super slow with it. I mean, I do love it. And I think this, I do it basically because um, I want that knowledge from my grandmother not to go. That's what I'm yeah. doing it from totally altruistic reasons. But I have to say, uh, over the last couple of years, I've get more and more people following me and connecting. And so I'm thinking, mm, you know, it's becoming a bit more of a, like an entity now. So more initially was just totally hobby, but it's still a hobby. But, you know, it's getting more and more. Um, yeah, you've done a beautiful job evolving the calendar and your workbooks. Um, I looked back through my email and it's been many years, actually, since I signed up to your site, it turns out, because you really evolved what you have. And you've made it so easy for people to check out. Like I said, like my mom on the calendar, we can go and look and see what activities are ideal for each day. Um, but I'm curious because my mom does the biodynamic treatments for our land. And what kind of biodynamic tra treatments was your grandmother making and using? Well, I mean, she was sort of a gardener, but she was mainly a businesswoman. So, and she used it for all sorts of things. My, my grandma, I mean, I don't want to go too much into my grandma. She was a very interesting lady. <laughs> and uh, and, and uh, yeah, she did, she did a lot for sort of um, medical stuff. Like she would, for example, the, when on the hair cutting day, the, the nettle tea, you know, when you have limp and um, thinning hair that you kind of put the nettle tea afterwards on after the shampooing and leaving in, that's definitely one thing she did every time uh hair cutting times lots of cooking things cooking with herbs there's lots of recipes from here there i mean i've done a bit of research as well it's not all about her because of right. 
it was a long time ago that well, unfortunately she died when I was like 18 so so um she's not been with us for, for a while so I you know I wish I had asked more questions then but when you're young you don't think about that so we don't <laughs> that's something that comes with time and wisdom to think about that um for people that aren't familiar with the biodynamic principles. Um, would you like to share a little bit more about what that means and what the, the philosophy behind it? Yes, I mean, biodynamics, the word actually comes from, from Rudolf Steiner. So anybody who is familiar with his work. And it was the phrase was coined in about 1924. Uh, no, so 21, yeah, it's around in the 20s, 1920s. And it means bio is the Greek word for life and uh, dunamis is the Greek word for energy. So it means life energy, life force. And what he meant is that it's we all this macrocosmos, which is like the earth, the stars, the moon, the sun, I mean, the, everything really. And the microcosmos, there's lots of little microcosmoses and they all work in harmony together. And if you see it like that is, you could say that it's like a big clockwork. I always describe it, you know, mm -hmm. the clock and it tells you the time, but there's hundreds of tiny little clocks turning and they all have their function. They all work, have to work beautifully together. And that's what life is. You know, it's all, if you look at the mm -hmm. garden, for example, you have got, you know, in spring, the seeds are coming up, then people, we harvest the land and we take the fruit away, but, and then we, well, the biodynamic garden anyway does. <laughs> it's compost of it, and the compost then goes back into the earth, and all the earth will prepares the soil again, and another cycle starts. And if you think about it, we, um, when I say we in the sort of Western world mainly, we see our life as linear, really. If you think about it, you know, there's always life, is there's birth, life, death, and there's all usually yeah. a beginning and end. But actually, if you really think of it from a biodynamic or holistic view, it's cyclic. Everything is cyclic. Look at the moon cycle, look at the, the earth going around the sun, look at the season, the year, everything is has is a cycle really. Yeah. And uh, so and that's what I think what the difference is about this lifestyle. It's an eternal mm -hmm. cycle. And that's when we go later into the goal planning. I think that's where it comes into. But yeah, so so uh, Rudolf Stein, although he kind of coined the phrase in the 1920s, the actual I mean, he didn't invent it either, you know, the invent, I mean, who invented it? It's going back. <laughs> I'm thinking. We're, we're all building on someone else's inspiration. Yeah, it's, so yeah. it's so old, you know, and that's what I think is so amazing about it because, you know, when you research, there comes all these people come who used it. There's Paracelsus, there's Aristoteles, there is Hippocrates. I mean, all these massive imp imp Empedocles who kind of came up with the elements and, and the principle of love and strife, which is like yin and yang, basically. I mean, if you look, just scratch on the surface, it's amazing who has been, the Minoans used it, the Sumerians used it, the Egyptians used it to a certain degree. So, I mean, it's it's not something I invented. I mean, it'd be amazing if I invented it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's why probably my stuff, stuff is interesting because, I mean, how many brains have been on that to make it what it is, you know? Yeah, and that, I mean, I think what is coming to mind is that is a cycle in and of itself, right? Like all these different minds working on the same topic and evolving it and sharing it and adding to it. That's its own cycle of evolution that it's going yeah. through, which is amazing. It's amazing that we have really lost the ability to see that because it's literally interesting until the very early 19th, um, 20th century, Farming practices were always like that. You know, if you went to the countryside, you smelled the manure and, and all, you know, that was just, even when I grew up, that was still there, but obviously I'm not, I'm not that old. As <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, but, but, but it's really from the first world war when they used the, uh, the gases in the trenches. Uh, and, and when that's when sort of is really started to go a bit downhill. And, from, for me, that's from, from, from my research, what I can see, because the, the, when the, the chemical warfare came in, the, the First World War was only four years, and then they had all these gas factories, and somebody came with this amazing solution saying, why don't we just dilute that stuff and put it on the fields, because obviously it kills people in diluted form. We can kill all the kind of insects, you know, which destroy the crop, and and that's, I think, where it initially come from, and it's very poignant and that's what I would like to say is that Rudolf Steiner coined that 
by dynamic movements literally straight after the First World War because you have to see the context of time. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. also, I know a bit about the, 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 the time scale there. I mean, obviously the, the land was devastated. It had just been war. People had not much to eat. So there was a big kind of flight to the countryside and uh, uh, and growing their own food again. And they and then the, lots of farmers were persuaded by these chemical compounds to use this magical new formula on their fields. And they came after three years and they said, oh my God, the soil is completely destroyed. And yeah. our crops only like three years ago, we had some most amazing crops and it doesn't grow anymore. And Rudolf Steiner was known for his uh, philosophies and nature things, research. And so he, he was asked by farmers to come up with a solution and he came and looked into it and he went into the ancient Greeks and so took stuff. That's why Bayer and Anamis from the ancient Greeks. And uh, it, it was literally out of necessity to reactivate the soil again. And, and it makes total sense because it's actually only very recently we know it's the microbes in our soil that really have so much to do. You know, if you have no microbes in the soil and no nutrients in the soil, then the spinach you eat, which is supposed to have iron, won't have any iron because it's not in the soil. It's, yeah, it's that mineral content is so yeah. important. And if you kill all that, that, as I said earlier, it's all about a cycle. But if you kind of put all these chemicals on, what you're doing, you know, this kind of finely tuned cycle with all the microbes preparing it, the compost, remoisturizing the soil, feeding the soil in a natural way, plants not growing next to each other in a wild form, cross fertilizing, you just destroy all this. So that means you have got these singular plants which have got live in a soil which is dead practically mm -hmm. because there's no microbes, there's no earthworms, there's nothing there anymore really. I mean, there might be a few, but not in the form as it should be. And that translates into the food as well. You know, if you read my blog, I write about this quite a lot because if you kind of have dead food, I mean, it's practically dead food what we often get served up. You know, if you, and that's why when you go to a biodynamic shop or even organic shop, I've got this fantastic um, box scheme which comes to my door. Oh my God, it's so much different. And you know, you yeah. feel good, it tastes so good. And it's maybe a little bit more expensive, but not so much expensive. And the health is the most important thing at the end of the day. It is. Without that, we can't do anything. I mean, it puts a full stop. So if That's I were sure. to say just one message to somebody who's listening who might initially think, oh, moon cycle, all that stuff is woo-woo. But think about your body, your microbes, and looking after yourself. You can really, it's so important. And eat live food. And like biodynamic is food which is, has got the life force within that's the best and if you're probably from your mom you know the wine biodynamic wine oh my god it tastes so much so amazing um, you oh, yeah. <laughs> around i mean there's only really advantages i see we, we cannot like it, it's hard to drink any other wine now because you know she's been doing these treatments on the land for like three years and the soil and the plants the vines they become so strong and you know the nutrients you're talking about and um, you know, we do the compost and now she's got into mulching as well to add more into the soil mm -hmm. and all these kind of things. And the wine is just tremendous. The flavor, how your body responds to it, you know, and our fruits and vegetables there as well. Mm -hmm. like it, it, yes. You don't get a hangover from a biodynamic wine. And they not. Silly amount. <laughs> But if you have a normal glass of wine, you'll never get a bad headache or anything from this because it's natural. Exactly. Can really feel the body says thank you when you eat that food and that drink that wine. It yeah. does, <laughs> and I can say we drink too much of it. Uh, and we have too much fun, and there, there is no hangover, unfortunately. <laughs> but you are what you eat. <laughs> That's very true. You are, and um, I'd love to talk about. Sorry, I'm referencing my notes a little bit. Um, you you know, kind of how we can apply that micro macro philosophy and the moon cycles you know to our lifestyle itself because as we're talking i realized you know while we're not at war we are coming out of place now where we're out of here where people have been you know disconnected in a lot of ways you know there's limited access to a lot of things and there's been a major disruption in our life and lifestyle and i think there's going to be a lot of us like really craving there's gonna be a lot of people trying to find the harmony and balance again because 
everything they had was disrupted. So how can people use these principles to create that harmony and balance in their lives and work on restoring like the mind, the body, the spirit, all different aspects with these principles? Well, it's, I think holistic, like I call it, well, I mean, I, as I said, I grew up with biodynamics, but what I added another dimension that's not so much for my grandmother. She used a little bit like that, but she was more the biodynamic side and the herbal tips and all that comes from her. But I really then started reading a lot on that subject matter and I sort of came across a lot the, of the work of Plato and Aristoteles. And Aristoteles has this fantastic, where holistic comes from really, um, the sum is, I think, so this is the the sum is greater than its parts, isn't it? Yeah, the sum is greater of its parts. So, and uh, and that's a and it fits in beautifully with the biodynamic, uh, you know, what the philosophy as I as I explained earlier. And what I've decided, and it's actually I've been doing living room for a very long time, but it's the lockdown because I'm a very busy makeup artist and work a lot on film sets, and so that's my my daily life as I explained. Um, but what lockdown has given me a little bit of time to sit and expand and think about it, and I thought so. I'm gonna revamp the the holistic lifestyle planning thing, and I have actually more planned. At the moment, it's still kind of small, but there's a lot in store in my head, and it's coming soon. So. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> I just want to from over promise, under deliver, but I have got lots of big plans there. Anyway, but what I have done is I have restructured my calendar and my and my system, and I have what I call it sort of the pyramid of life. And this is like um, your pyramid, in, it has got five levels and mm -hmm. uh, nobody has told me that i'm sure there are other ways because it's it's all connected but i thought that would be really a good way of structuring the whole thing because it's such a big topic if you think about it you know and yeah. so well, at the bottom i put the the what, what i call when you call my calendar the the herb uh, so the turquoise uh symbols and that's all to do with health beauty it's basically your life it's your kind of your body yeah. So kind of like that, which helps you build up your life force. Like yeah, it's, it's just your, yeah, it's your world, and like your body, your health, uh, the way you look, that's you. Then the second layer is your environment. That would be your house, your garden, possibly cooking comes into that. It's sort of intermixed with the first level. Then the third level is the relationships. It's how you re interact with people. That could be your family that could be your work colleagues that could be charity work which i put in there it could be your pets as well for example any any interaction with others and then the fourth one is vocation and career and i don't mean like scrambling for the basic money i think more kind of about fulfillment but really mm -hmm. what you want to do in life and what where you really shine because i mean lots of people you ask them what do you really want but most people really don't know and I think, and the, the fifth level is, which ties it all together, is a spiritual level. It's, um, I wouldn't so call it, I mean, some people may say you're religious, but I, it's, I would call it spiritual. That could be even um, sort of from yoga to kind of certain, yeah, spiritual activities, meditation, whatever, you know, minds, mindfulness, whatever you want to call kind it. Of so, what? Ever connects us to connecting, yeah. The greater so the body, the mind, and the soul, and mm -hmm. that forms this harmony. And I think that works really well with the biodynamic system. So you got that on one side, and the way you slot it in, I also have to devise a small thing, which again I'm, I'm on the making a little bit more accessible to others. It's called a holistic life a life goal plan, and this has been, it's in a very basic form at the moment, but this has been really my uh, tool for my life, really. And mm -hmm. I have, I'm not going to brag, but I have got a very successful marriage. I've got a good career. I've got family. I've got a nice house in London. So it has worked for me, I can say. And um, can we share just a few of the things you've done in your career? Because you've mentioned film, but I, I want people to really know the level that you work at. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I've been I've been working in the film industry for a very long time, but yeah, I've been. I've been part of Saving Private Ryan. I've done Fifth Element. I've been doing most of the Harry Potter films. So yes, I've been doing it on a very top level, I would say. Yes, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's important to talk about because sometimes, you know, when we talk about a holistic lifestyle, it can mean to some people that you're 
not participating in the modern world or you're not finding that success. So I think the more we can add that conversation that you can take these principles that you've designed and you're talking about and also use them to create that level of success. It's just something I want to keep reminding people of. Um, yeah. Well, that's my secret. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> you, that's really what it is. My grandmother said something to me when I was very little, and she said, "You know what? You can have everything, but not all at the same time." And that's really. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the time, you know, it wasn't. It stuck with me, but it didn't make sense to me because a little child, it doesn't make sense. But now, the older I get, it does make sense. And exactly that's what holistic lifestyle planning for me is, because you can, as all said, all these areas you have to have all of them but you can't have it all at the same time there are times when my career was probably more important but then i looked at the bigger picture and i was pulled back and then i had my children and, and my husband is a producer he's busy and stuff so so i mean obviously we want to have a really good relationship time as well and then you know with my relationship with my mother who's abroad and, and she's in Austria still and, and my siblings and 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 also I want to fulfill myself. I want to have some sort of spiritual time or maybe more creative time. I used to paint a lot, you know, and that's it seems an awful lot, but you can shift it in a way that you can have everything, but not all at the same time. You can have little bits at the same time, but you yeah it's a planning tool and that's exactly what it is and, uh, and so what i do is i come from a very big perspective and i first initially and i think that's the most important thing it's like when you go on a journey you really have to decide where you really want to go mm -hmm. and uh, so i just kind of put a little plan together it does change over a while but on the whole it doesn't change that much and it's different for everybody you know you can't say what is good for one person is not good for another person not everybody wants to be a high level film person the other person might want to have an amazing garden or something you know it's different for everybody i'm not saying this is better than the other mm -hmm. and then you're going to look at like a yearly cycle and because of i didn't mention it beforehand a lot of the, the calendar my calendar system is really uh, coming from the ancient so lunisolar calendar system, which I find works much better than we just have the solar calendar now. It was really Julius Caesar which kind of got away with the whole moon side of it, and we kept to that system. But actually, I think it really works very well putting them both together. But because the month comes from the moon cycle, months is mene, the old world. Greek word for moon and minute, all that comes from the moon cycle. So we're still using the timing perspective of it, but we're just not using the actual tool. And it's true, the moon cycle and the year don't really work together because they're, they're out of sync. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why Julius Caesar brought in the Julian calendar. But if you step back again and look at it in a bigger picture, and the Greeks already knew that, is 19 years work out exactly 235 moon cycles 100 percent to the day mm. in the, the exactly to the same position in the sky in the solar system and that's called the metonic cycle if anybody wants to look it up you know the metonic um, cycle i do i'm gonna look it up after it's named after Meton, uh who was a greek philosopher 400 bc and i would say he probably didn't invent that either i think because already the babylonians used that so he probably got wind, you know, that the Sumerians, Babylonian already used that system because they was already in use before then, the, this this system, you know. The Babylonians particularly made it very big. This so so when so basically you can plan your life that so so the so the solar year is like the bigger picture thing planning wise and then every moon cycle you kind of accomplish things. And and I wanna say so what what that's well, I forgot earlier about the biodynamic system is there is a saying and that my grandmother used it a lot actually days don't just have dates they also have qualities and if I you're a farmer you know about that days mm -hmm. have qualities and that's really interesting you can see it if you know a little about it and see the patterns and you know about this old knowledge. You know, it's not right in your face, but if you know about it, you really can use it to to your benefit. I mean, I'm just giving you very few examples. Mm -hmm. Like an example, there are days when the woods are fuller of, of um, when you kind of uh, cut wood, it's fuller of water or moisture and it doesn't rot. So we have bridges in the Alps, which are cut on the, what we call the right day which is a certain days you did you can work it out in your calendar and then it doesn't rot this this been in the water for 200 years there are wood there are days 
other days, uh, when you cut wood, it doesn't burn. It chars, but it doesn't burn. So they mm. used to kind of store for hay, for example. So it was like a fire risk. So it, so anything. But obviously, these are is this what the wood you would never use for firewood. And you probably because they wouldn't burn. <laughs> burn. It chars. And you probably have anybody who has an open fireplace probably has had that experience. Sometimes you get a patch of wood and it doesn't burn very well. That's what it is. It's been, it's been yeah, I didn't connect that, but you're right. I mean, because that's why living there with my mom and stepdad, we're dependent on fire wood, and sometimes we would have wood that wood didn't burn well, really well, and, and it doesn't. Yeah, but it is. It's the wrong day. It's amazing. It is. And um, it's good. if you know that, know about it, you need to know about it, obviously. Then, then there's so many applications for that, and there's days when there is more oil in the in the in the olives for example or in the wine or there is for example there are days when you kind of collect your apples and they rot less so people used mm -hmm. to it was basically the farming system they had their calendars they work out they would say okay on that day i kind of i want to make apple juice so i pick it on that day when the the, the fruit is full of uh, juice and i get more juice out but the, but if i wanted to store the apples for a long time that wouldn't be so good because they would rot earlier you see courses for courses one day that means good for this one day is good for that but what it did on the whole it worked together so you, and i think that's what i think living with this moon is so good because you have the the moon cycle so you obviously so you got your sort of whole life then you got the, the solar year which everybody's familiar with and then you got the moon cycle and the moon cycle again is on average well it's 29.5 days to be precise but say mm -hmm. call it 28 days you know because there's different cycles it's, i don't want to make it too complicated because there's there's a satiric cycle and you know but but on the on average is 28 days they call it and then that again is has got the four quarters so there's the the moon cycle starts off with the new moon the traditional it always has and then that's sort of the, new, the end and the new beginning so the new moon that means that the moon stands between the sun and the earth that means there's no light comes back to earth so that the, we don't see any moon and then as it grows so the first crescent the first seven days that's called the four, the first quarter or some people call it also the the waxing crescent moon and then, that's what I kind of know it by more the waxing crescent. Uh, some, yeah, I, I I grew up calling it the first quarter, but it's exactly the same. It's just a different way of naming it. So that's the first seven days. And that is the, also the first week because the moon cycle divided by for the four quarters is the blueprint for the week. No? So you see mm -hmm. how it all connects. It's amazing if you think about it. And so so, okay, so the first quarter is it's a good time to start things. And then you have got the second quarter when it goes to the full moon. And that is called also the waxing gibbous moon. That's another way of saying it. But I call it the second quarter. And that's the time we traditionally absorb more. It's good for skin care. It's good for yeah, anything you want to absorb. It's good for plant. The, the, the waxing moon, generally speaking, is good for, for planting, actually. There's, there's, I mean, it's too much here to go into. If people are really interested, they can look into a book. Yeah. Or, get more information but but uh yeah there are certain times so, so for example like um the seeded tomatoes you should plant more in the second quarter whereas uh spinach or leaves more in the first quarter it they're different planting dates but and that that's really statistically proof because they have done loads of trial runs now uh but it's been around for hundreds of years it's literally practice passed down over centuries that's what it is yeah. then you have got the full moon it's on the opposite side so that it can be full fully illuminated and um, that is traditionally that has been a time for celebration for going out and because it was actually not so much to do with them well it's got a little bit to do with the moon but it's got mainly to do with the practicalities because you don't want to go out when you can't see and like hundreds right. of thousands of years ago it was pitch black was it so and also they didn't have a clock as such so it was easy to say, well, let's meet up when it, the moon is full. Everybody could look up and see, oh, the moon is full. That's that's the time to meet, you know. So it was a practical thing, but also like, um, but there is there's now more and more studies coming out very recently that it that you are more restless at full moon, for example. Mm -hmm. That there's been so I mean, lots of stuff have been disproved. Some have been disproved and are getting re-approved again. You know, you know. 
So I don't want to go more so much into scientific. No, that's okay. <laughs> there is a lot of scientific evidence there, but there's also lots of disapproving, and it comes from various quarters. Anyway, so then we go into the the waning cycle. That's the time usually to lose weight, to um, anything diminishing. Like for example, during the waxing cycle, I would do more kind of uh, skin treatments which nourish, like oils or anti aging. And then as you go to the waning phase, it's much better to kind of do good body brushing, scrubbing, exfoliation, that kind of method. And I think it's very good as well to change, being a makeup artist, I know that, to change uh, your products up because firstly, the skin um, renews every 28 days, bizarrely at the same time as the moon cycle, huh? How there is. <laughs> Very coincidental and interesting. Yeah, no, it's all. I think if you what the the more you look at the from the distance, the more you see how it all hangs together. We are kind of really done, and um, but but at the same time, you don't want to do all the same thing. This, so that you have got the time where you kind of nourish more, and you have got the time to work more, and you've got the time to you want to do, lose more weight and to clean your house, you know, and then the, this, and then so, so seven days and so the, the Venus Gibbous moon and then you come to the last quarter, the last seven days of the moon cycle, that's the waning crescent moon or the fourth quarter. And then you go back into the new moon and another cycle starts again and that's ever repeating. And, um, and the new moon is so the beginning and end and I always use this as a good time for detoxing, for, I always put then my, new months ahead my my goal planner i kind of see what i have achieved but not too much pressure it's literally like just a time clock until 28 days is a fantastic way of keeping in check because you know make a plan in the beginning of a year it's just too long is it yeah but 28 days is a very easy way it's like this constant waning waxing waning waxing rhythm it's two weeks two weeks on two weeks off if you want to see it and it's a that's really ingrained with us and especially as women we have that yeah. cycle we follow that cycle anyway so so it's all really connected with all this the skin is in the same rhythm the periods are in the same rhythm the fertility cycle in the same rhythm some hormones fall out in the same rhythm so it does just work it's a more natural rhythm to us that's why I think it's a shame not to use the moon cycle. Yeah, I'm curious, how do you work into the, like running your business, you know, doing your work as a makeup artist in alignment with the moon cycles? I mean, with the when it comes to makeup work, I mean, I do my personal life. I very much structure with this. As as I as I keep my, I look at my calendar, and I I I really need this calendar to live now. You know, it's become so much part of my life. I mean, it's like your mom. I look it up. Oh, it's good today and stuff. Yeah. And it's not, it's not so much that oh my god, I have to do this today, but it's a very good reminder. And I think, uh, I think that's really where the powerful thing comes from from the moon calendar that you have got. It's a bit of a crutch, you know. Oh, what can I do today? Oh, it gives you suggestions every day. Uh, yeah. But when, when obviously my makeup work is like they they give me a schedule and I have to do certain things on certain days, you know that I can't always work with the moon calendar. But what I do behind the scene, I definitely line it up. And I would say, if I can, for example, cut somebody's because they are bad hair days, you know, they exist. There are some days you should not cut hair, other days they grow really well the hair. I've got people getting in touch with me every month asking for the best hair cutting days and say, since they do that, their hair has grown so much, there's not another limp, they got full, full, fuller hair again. And so so if I have to cut somebody's hair, I do look at the moon calendar. I don't tell anybody. <laughs> and if I have like an option to do it, let's say Monday or Friday, and Monday is a good hair cutting day, but Friday is not, then I do it on Monday or I do it the other way. Sometimes I can't, and I and, right. and that's okay as well, you know, because I mean, it should be a guide. It shouldn't be like a complete construct as well, you know. But if I can fit it, or like a dental appointments, I would never do a dental appointment at certain times in the moon cycle, because like if you do it just before full moon, I've I've actually tried that out. The, the fillings don't last. It's always just more painful. Fillings fall out much easier. And they've done, in Germany, done lots of uh, uh, trial runs, and that's true. So, or paint paint windows. Obviously, sometimes they can't change it. If you do a massive building job, you can't time it perfectly. But I was trying to get all the work or the painting job done to the waning cycle. It's, it's just keeps better, flakes less. 
So, and do you have a breakdown? I know you've got the calendar, but on your website, do you have a breakdown of like all the activities that are best during each moon cycle? Well, what I have actually, um, I I can't put everything on because it's so much um, yeah. so many activities, and I have to actually. That's one I need to get a focus group and see what is the most important ones because I have my charts. I live with my charts, you know, so I work it for myself. And uh, there was a time I had a print calendar and then I took it off because, I don't know, I changed my symbols around. I wanted to make it a bit different. And then I was so lost without my print calendar because I always looked at my calendar and said, oh, my God, that's what I'm doing today. And, <laughs> and I still now gone back to this print calendar. And it's just the easiest way for me to use it, just print it all, have it on the cup with, oh, you know, I just now I, the thing is in the beginning, like everything in life is become is a bit too overwhelming because yeah. the symbols and things. And I think that's what I probably have to I'd probably do a video course or something at one point to really get gently explain it a bit better. I know it's a bit too much info at, at first, but once you kind of know it, so you start with one or two symbols. Say, for example, you're a keen gardener, just start when to water your plants and to weed them, for example. Yeah. Or if you want to do something about skincare, just start with when to nourish your skin and when to exfoliating. I don't, I don't know, it doesn't matter, whatever, wherever you start, you know, and then you just build it slowly up. And then and then eventually, you know, this symbol that means this and symbols that. And then eventually you just have to glance at the calendar, you see it all and you know exactly what to do. And it does really make a difference because going back for the work thing, so traditional, because you said the, the, the pyramid, so layer four, mm -hmm. Let's talk about the work side here, maybe, because because uh, um, lots of people want to watch that, are possibly interested in that. Um, so I see the moon cycle uh, for planning. So like the new moon stage is always where I plan everything. So what I want to do in, in this cycle. And, you know, they always say where attention goes, energy flows. And it's true. If you are conscious and put attention to it, you will do it because your brain is a computer. And if you put positive attention to it, you know, it's just automatically kind of what you put in that comes out. You know, if it's a negative yeah. thing, it will come out possibly too. But if you put a positive thought and say da 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 da, da it's con in a very constructive way, it sometimes you don't think it and it's happening. It doors open up. It's unrelated. It's magic. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. And um and I know some people don't believe it, but actually I would urge people to try it because it does really work. Suggestion and that you kind of positive, you know, you say, uh, I do this and it's going to be great and stuff. It does happen. And so anyway, so those the faxing cycle for me is always like the building up is more the brainstorming, the creation thing. You know, if I, for example, I want to decorate a room or something, and it's a very simple example. So I would use the waxing cycle more for kind of gathering a mood board, ideas and stuff. And then the waning cycle would be more kind of where then I get, actually get the paint and start painting and do the, do the actual work. And the same goes for me with the work side as well, you know. the And because you cannot do everything as I said earlier, all at the same time. And it gets boring as well. So I find if I structure my life two weeks where I do more the creative stuff and the building up stuff, and then two weeks where I do more kind of the stuff, you know, the checking the to-do list, getting rid of the backlog, so to speak, you know, doing my receipts and stuff, yeah. I keep myself much easier in check because you can't, you can't just always check your receipts or you can't just always be just creative. Do you know what I mean? But with this system, yeah. it's keeps it interesting two weeks on two weeks off it's very easy to do then at full moon i try to go out a little bit more if i if i kind of have have you know, obviously some people have, have there are some sometimes you have to make appointments and it doesn't matter what the moon cycle is doing but if i say plan a party i try to do it more towards the full moon because people tend to be happier and stay out longer they don't know it but they do it's i've noticed yeah. You know, and then during the and also then it gives me uh, a time during the waning moon. Uh, sorry, during the, the new moon, it's when and I kind of go into a little bit my shell and I want to detox and I want to let people leave me alone and I want to kind of focus a little bit on myself and I don't feel guilty about that. Yeah, I get, let give myself permission because I feel if you're constantly on that hamster wheel, then you just really haven't got time to literally think what you really want to do and. And you lose your perspective. It's like life is a path, you know. Like as I said, say it's like I was describe it in my goal plan initially going up a mountain. But first of all, you want to make sure that it's the right mountain you want to go up because it's right. not going up there. And if you just 
spend years getting up the mountain. You sit there and say, actually, that's not where I want to be. I want to be on that mountain. What, what a waste of your life or time. So it is, you better check that where you go is really where you really want to go. So that's the first thing I say. And then as you as you walk along, that it makes it easy. You know, like every cycle, let's say a, a journey of a thousand miles, that's with one step. So that's one step or one long cycle. And then it's not perfect, but then, okay, you just do another cycle. You know what I mean? It gives you permission to again and again and hone it better. And uh, so for me, that works. I mean, it might not work for everybody. I'm not saying it's the perfect system for everybody. I, I mean, I know it works for me as well. I, I There's so much room for it to grow, but the small ways that I've implemented trying to live in alignment with the natural rhythms, I can see the results and, I'm curious, do you find that intuitively you, as you've done the work to tune in to the moon cycles and the rhythms, do you feel now that you intuitively know what to do when? Like, no. No? <laughs> okay. I know. I follow the charts. And the reason I follow these charts, as I said for my grandmother, that's that's really the charts for my grandmother. That's not for me. And that goes back to thousands of years. This is stuff when I said there's certain days, this is good and that is good, that's been passed down from thousands mm -hmm. of years. So I use that. I just literally, I just kind of, it took me ages to put all this knowledge in this one chart, you know. I can imagine because it's quite a comprehensive my chart. God. And that's why it took so long to get started with this website because how, how do I put all this information into one easy calendar? That took me so long, I can't tell you. But now I've got it, I've got my charts, I know what to do when. I just literally take that information and put it on the calendar and I just try to do it like that. That's what I do. Yeah. I mean, I it like by numbers, but it does work because then it, all the activities are spread out, they're equally mm -hmm. managed. So you, again, do, you do a little bit of this there, with that there, and it's sort of evenly balanced. And it's all about the balance. Yeah, I mean, it's what you're saying. You've created a system that's in alignment with these principles. So you've got the macro, micro, like look at your overall planning, like you talked about. And then on each moon cycle, break down the micro level, the activities that you want to do, how you want to do them, what you want to focus on. Like I know from talking to you today, I'm going to focus more on my skincare, like when I do what, because that hasn't been a very intentional part of my lifestyle yet. Um, I take care of my skin, but not in an intentional way. Mm -hmm. So I love how it honors, you know, not only just the rhythms because we're following the moon cycle, but we all have that natural ebb and flow. And the system that you're teaching is helping people get in touch with it if they're not as sensitive. Like, I know personally, I can feel the rhythms. That's why I turned to looking to living with mm -hmm. the moon and different things because I'm very sensitive and um, I just feel them. That's why I was curious. <laughs> If you do so for me, I look for the confirmation because I'll be feeling a certain way. And without like a guide, like, you know, your chart or something else to look at, I can be hard on myself. But when we have that confirmation, it says, oh, yes, like I feel this way. And, you know, there's this bigger rhythm going on. There's this bigger cycle that I'm being asked to lean into. So it's OK to feel that way. Take that time to go and plan and step out and take care of you or mm -hmm. During the full moon, I felt very like going out. So we went out to dinner and, you know, I had a ton of energy and I was just like loving people. And um, I just love that for people that maybe aren't as sensitive or people like me that need that confirmation, you've got that tool to help us find that balance and go broad and narrow. I mean, some it's people just, are naturally like that. I mean, they come in all spectrums. There are some people are super sensitive and they, they look at my child, like you said, it makes total sense. Others are not sensitive, and that's fine too. They might need that tool even more, I would say. And what often happens is if people are not sensitive, it's, they often say, oh, that's rubbish and stuff, because it's just they can't feel it. It's like if, right. I, if I can hear music and I can really enjoy it, or somebody's deaf, they say, oh, well, I can't hear anything, I can't hear anything. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Look at the radio. I mean, radio waves are all around us. If I have, a, if I have an mm -hmm. a radio, and I switch it on, I can hear it. If I haven't got the radio, you know, some people have a radio, some people haven't got a radio. So it doesn't mean it doesn't exist, it's there. But, you know, mm -hmm. some people might need an extra planning tool and mm -hmm. I think it might be the right thing for them if they're interested in that. But I think you do need to be interested. And I also think it's not something which happens straight away. 
and I don't know if you found that it's something you kind of I mean obviously I've been doing for so long I don't even know when it's started but it's a rhythm we all yes. kind of program to a certain rhythm so if you completely never lived like that and you just do it for two days and you say oh that doesn't work no it wouldn't work you do need it for a, give it at least a half a year I'd say to find your rhythm and then you might find your own rhythm you might find that the skincare works better for you like on that day you know keep a diary as well maybe because people are different again and it's yeah. the same diet you know we are our micro micro uh, in my uh, guts the microbes in the in our guts they they are very different we all kind of are very different and that's why we crave different foods and if you just eat been eating takeaway food for years and then all of a sudden you go on a diet and say oh tomorrow i'm going to be super healthy it just doesn't work because inside graves the other stuff which you have been feeding for years you need if you want to change you need to do it very gradually like do one really good meal a week and then keep the rest as your life as you had it and then maybe go to two meals a week but very yeah. gently abruptness doesn't work at all you know our body's not built for it you know no no i'm glad you touched on that yeah we really you know just ease into it take your time pick the thing that resonates and it's the one I that you want to focus on and yeah i think that's what the way steps. Do, a, do a, like one really big session what you really want like that's what i suggest with the holistic life goal planner mm -hmm. and then really kind of so dissect it and be really honest because not don't say what what society pressures you to do or what this person says your partner says be really honest with yourself because you got to live with yourself at the end of the day and that's where yeah. happiness comes from it doesn't come from shiny objects and you know i've been around a lot of really famous people and stuff so i i can i've seen really you know a lot of Really, really people where they say, oh, they should have everything. And some some of them are very happy and some of them are not happy because happiness doesn't, money doesn't give you happiness on the long term. It is really mm -hmm. deeper sense of fulfillment, being happy, vocation. If you are in balance, mm -hmm. that's the happiness. And then you kind of radiate it. You kind of shine. People come, you come in a room and people say, oh, my God, I, I like being a <laughs> person who has a good energy. That's, you know, that's what it is. We want to have good energy within us. And we usually have good energy if we have our vision and we can fulfill it and whatever way it is. It does not always have to do with money or, you know, it could be having a fantastic relationship. But as I said, I like the way of a little bit of everything, but not all at the same. Yeah. That's my philosophy. You have everything in moderation. I feel the same way. Well, I, I love that you summed up that, um, how you think about success and happiness, I feel the same way. It's been my same experience. I think it's so important that we keep talking about that. And I just wanna direct people again to your, I put the, for those watching on the screen, um, a link to Yuta's free resources. So if you go to our website, thelivingwiththemoon.com um, forward slash freebies, you can download the lifestyle calendar that she's been talking about the holistic life goal planner. So each step that she was walking you through, um, that guide will take you through that so you can implement everything we've been talking today. And then she's got her ebook, The Introduction to Living with the Moon. Yeah, it's still very basic. And, and, and as I said, at the moment, it's totally altruistic. I, there's a newsletter I sent, hopefully quite good information up because I have been people on my list for years now. But but I, it is really, uh, a, from my side, a voluntary project at this stage. And I really do that because I, I really want to keep, I, I really believe in this. I, it has done. Yeah lot of good and i really want people to kind of be be exposed to it I, as i was lucky to have been exposed when i was little you know not everybody has a grandmother who is telling them that you know so I yeah was there, so and uh and it might not be for everybody too you know my my husband has a fantastic saying which uh, is great and he says always in life in life you have got someone to love something to do and something to look forward to and i think that is a very good saying isn't it and that's, that's perfect I, really i mean in my whatever i do that that's my life philosophy partly as well but i think as i kind of this holistic lifestyle design i think i think it's appealing and i think at the moment we probably do know it more than than ever before you we know do. at the last 50 years certainly um i think at the moment and it's something to really, if you're down, that you can really, because you, you cannot really, you know, we're all part of this, we're all little microcosmoses, if you think about it, part of this big microcosmos. But mm -hmm. the, 
you can do a little bit about the macrocosmos. Obviously, everybody has like it's like the butterfly effect. Everybody has everything has an effect. But but what you can really do a hundred percent is you can take care of your microorganism, uh, microcosmos, and which is you. That's how yeah. you hundred percent control of that. Really, you know, you can really sit down and say, today I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea and I'm gonna literally really plan my life what i really want to do and then go forward and, and implement it and if initially it might be just tiny little baby steps but the baby steps consistently done over years in the right direction consistently in the same direction oh my god it's very powerful i think it is there was a quote that changed my life many years ago by rumi i don't know if you've heard of it but it, it's the same topic you're talking about and it's um something I'm terrible at saying quotes. I paraphrase everything, but it goes something like, um, at first I wanted to change the world and then I became wise and decided to change myself. And that's been a guiding light because like you say, I firmly believe that when you go that micro, when you take care of your body, when you take care of your closest relationships, when you take care of, you know, just the simple interactions, you know, with each person that you interact with every day, you know, that that's, where you can create real change and yes the macro i'm all for creating much bigger change but if you're not doing the micro then just focusing on the macro to and me the is mind, hollow yeah and the mind and the body is totally interlinked and the soul but what is what i said earlier is totally interlinked because you can sometimes not change your mind the mind is like it's like uh, elusive, isn't it? You know, you can't, the more you think, oh my God, I mustn't think that thought, the more you think it because you sort of thinking more about it. Oh my God, I must lose weight. You cannot control it. But what you can do is you can control your body and you have, there are mechanisms, for example, with breathing, you know, I don't know if you know that, but you know, if you breathe in like your breath, for example, is an amazing way to uh, uh, control your body. Like mm -hmm. if you breathe in really deeply and, 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 so breathe in and but deeply breathe out i call it happy in grumpy out then you just release tension so if you're really stressed and you kind of uh you know lots of things are going on and you're really so oh my god you're traffic jam and goodness what so that's the way to do it you breathe in long breath out but if you feel at home and you've you know you've been in covid and everything you don't want to go out everything is too much you feel totally overwhelmed by the world you feeling the opposite side you you want to energize yourself it's all the way to do that you, it's really breathe in deeply and breathe out quickly <sighs> you know so like build it up. do you see what i mean that's that's very yeah. physiological things you can i mean it's simple you just trick your body in the same it's the same like you can trick a little bit your mind but focusing on this and the body has no other choice but to do that you know so you know, we are simple beings. We haven't changed in thousands of years. And that's the thing is our technology changed, our cars changed, our phone. I mean, you know, when I grew up, I didn't have a mobile phone. It didn't exist. Now, how many have I had now? But what has not changed is our brain, the way we think, the way we need mm -hmm. to relate, the way we need to sleep, the way we love. You know, that hasn't changed. We're still the same. Yeah. The way we eat food. So, you know, and that's why this old wisdom is very applicable. Because we haven't changed that much in 4,000 years. Maybe a little bit, but not much. No. We're, we're still animals. We're still <laughs> it's a, humans, but, you know, biological creatures. We're like equal to all other species, and that's why we really must harm the environment. Because at the end of the day, by, you know, like if you look at the clock symbol, as I said beforehand, if you just smash half of the clock do you think it still shows the time properly i don't think so you know you need no. to make sure the whole system works well not just part of it i think yes i totally agree 100 percent. and that's why i'm so glad you came on today to help teach people how to take care of their own system <laughs> my moon blubberings and so yeah. yeah but thank you again so much for joining me today um for anyone that wants to go forward again, you can go to livingwiththemoon.com slash freebies to download the great resources that you just shared with us today. It's and just one the sign up thing. And honestly, you get at the moment, it's just a monthly newsletter. It's just because I'm so busy with lots of other things. And as I said, there's not even any advertising or anything. It's just purely content and you can get the free calendar. And it's, it's still kind of 
infancy a little bit you know I'm, I'm trying to hone it over the years now i ever say it every year but i'm such as a busy person as well so it's a it's a very valuable resource um your words are quite modest i've seen the work you've done and consistently put out and you give people so much value for free truly so thank um, you yeah I would like to just touch somebody's life today if they find it interesting, if they feel totally overwhelmed and, and kind of use the system to make them feel better and happier. I have my job's done. I love it. And feel free to, I know you welcome people to reach out to you so they can respond to your newsletter and let you know what they liked from um, using the calendar and what's been helpful. And you're yeah. always glad to receive that feedback. I would think I would like to get more feedback actually because it's very helpful how to, you know, because I, for me, that all makes sense. But if you have been exposed to it, I've been to living this for so many years now. But if you if you're completely new to it, I can I can understand it's totally overwhelming, and it's very helpful for me to say actually that section I don't understand it, or that is very useful, or that's not so useful. That's yeah, any feedback is always good. Great. Well, everyone, feel comfortable if you're listening now or later to reach out to Utah. As you can hear, she'd love to hear your feedback. And thank you again for sharing your valuable family wisdom and your own personal wisdom that you've learned along your way. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. It was really a pleasure talking to you. Oh, you're so welcome. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.